grocery pick up today. Uh, it sounds like my mom is coming to pick our daughter up between 12 and 1 probably. Um, grocery pickup is between 2 and 3 I think. So I'm going to get her some breakfast made. Um, I could show you the house right now. Uh, it's like dirty here because, well, virtual school. So let's get this day started. Cashews, peanuts, pretzels, and rice cereal. You know it's Christmas in my house when you borrow mama's roaster and you make Chex Mix. Hey guys, so it is Saturday, December 12th, the 12th day of Flossmas. I hope everyone had a great day. I have been cleaning, laundry, grocery shopping. Um, I still have to mop the floor. I think that's the only thing left I have to do. I'm still working on the laundry. That's not done. I still have two more loads that need to be washed, but yes. So thanks for everyone who is talking about how organized I am. On my meal planning, um, this is the only way I can try to keep us somewhat from going to the store a lot. They were out of quite a few things that I need, so I am going to have to pick those up. Um, but this is what I do every two weeks for grocery shopping. Um, I have been meal planning like that for, shoot before my daughter was born, so at least over five years. So it seems to pretty well work out for us, so. All right, so I did no crocheting last night. Like I said, I wanted to just sit and stitch. I worked on Halloween night, like I showed you guys yesterday. Um, I'm gonna insert a picture here of where it was last time. And I did, between last night and so far this, well, this morning before I started doing anything, I did 328 stitches. Um, so here we are right now. So I'm working on the next row. For anyone who may have never seen it before, it's on a hoop, so it's not gonna be super detailed, but this is my Halloween night piece so far. So I love this piece. This is one of my four full coverage projects I have and a fifth to be started later this month. I'm going to have to figure out a rotation for these. So like I said, 328 stitches of just 939 and then I just started 310 today. Those are the only two colors I've done. I do have a um, fire tablet and I have pattern keeper. And if you do full coverage patterns, especially, it's a game changer, seriously. You can go from like mistakes and counting wrong to it's really easy. And I just work one color throughout the entire row and I do row completion by row completion. That's how I've done my firefighter piece so far. That's how I do every five. That's how I do all my full coverages right now. So just row by row, I love it. So, as promised, we are going to do some Q&A. So, um, I had some questions put in by some people as well as someone else suggested I do the Know Your Needleworker tag. So, we'll start with the Know Your Needleworker tag and then I will do a couple of the questions that were asked. Ready? Let's roll. Number one, where do you live? I think I've mentioned this before, but I live in Michigan. Um, I live about, mm, about 20 minutes south of Flint and about mm, an hour or so north of Detroit. So I'm kind of between those. What do you do for a living? 
So I am a nurse. Um, I, I spent 11 years as a EMT at an ambulance. I then worked in the ER as a nurse. I've worked um, long-term care slash short-term care rehab for a little bit before I got the job I am now. Um, I am the only palliative care RN in, um, in our program. We have nine nurse practitioners that it's a NP driven program and it's palliative care. And palliative care and hospice get uh, confused a lot and they're not the same thing. Hospice is deemed end of life. Um, more, it's Their focus is you are no longer seeking aggressive treatments. Um, and their their goal is to keep you comfortable. Um, Michelle Bendy was a hospice nurse before. Um, our company did hospice for my grandfather before he passed. They were phenomenal with him. His nurse Sarah was fantastic with him. Palliative care is a little bit different. Palliative care, um, we focus on helping you manage any chronic illness. If you have cancer, you can still be going to receive chemo. You can still be going to receive radiation. Um, our goal is if you have a chronic illness, you qualify for palliative care. High blood pressure, COPD, CHF, cancer, any of that stuff. Our goal is to just help you manage that. Um, and hopefully, possibly, in that decrease, your hospital stays. So... My job as the nurse, I do a lot of the back work for the nurse practitioner. So they go out, they see the patients, they do their notes, and I kind of handle everything else. Um, I do all the prior authorizations and medications that are needed. I, nine times out of ten, I'm the one calling the doctor's office when patients are ready and I'm getting the verbal from them to switch to hospice. I'm doing the back leg on any home care order that needs to be done. I'm calling the doctor and getting that verbal from them. Um, I am adding all their new patients, meds, history, um, allergies, all that stuff, plus triaging um, any calls that come in with any questions by patients whatsoever. You have a medication question. Um, you don't know if you should go to the hospital, you know, stuff like that. I even handle some social work calls sometimes. Um, you know, patients difficulty not knowing, they feel like they're drugging a family member when backstory. So we have a dementia patient and he won't take his medication that he desperately needs because he gets angry because he's not, he is an angry dementia patient. And his daughter-in-law is putting it in his drink. Fine. He can't taste it and he's taking it. But she called me crying because she felt like she's drugging him. But it's not safe for her if he's not on these medications. Um, so I do a lot. My days are busy. And it bothers me sometimes because sometimes the NPs are like, well, I'm keeping you busy today. You have stuff to do today. I have stuff to do from the minute I walk in that door to the minute I go home. I usually work through my lunch breaks. They just, when you're doing, I'm doing stuff like that for every single NP, not just one. And I think they forget that sometimes. So I do like my job. Um, I like the aspect of focusing on something besides emergency, which is all I've ever known, um, to now our focus is helping people manage things so we can kind of keep them out of the ER. That was a really long explanation, but now you know what I do. <laughs> Um, what are your favorite hobbies other than cross stitch? So I like to crochet, which you guys have seen. I like to um, sew here and there. That's a new one I dabbled into. Let's see if I knock everything over by doing this. Okay, see if I, I dabble in project bags that I make. So these are two of them. I still need to list these. I have two of these, two of these. Um, so I kind of just like to dabble in stuff like this for sewing. Um, what else? I want to learn how to knit. Um, I like to read. 
I don't get a lot of reading time though. Um, audiobooks, I sometimes have, I'll just play one of those while I'm working in the background at work. Um, I like to bake. I like to cook. That's probably about it. Yeah, that's about it. Okay. Number four, do you have any children? I do. Um, I have a daughter, Bella. She is five. Um, I have a stepdaughter, Chloe, who is 20, but she has kind of went MIA on us. We know she's alive. She just chooses not to come around my husband's side of the family or mine um, because she wants to live her life the way she wants. Um, and that's fine. She is an adult, but... Um, she just doesn't like being called out on things sometimes. Nobody does, let's be honest. But family and really good friends are going to call you out on your crap sometimes so you can change and be a better person. That's how I view it. I've been called out uh, before by quite a quite a lot of family and friends. And it I you don't need to be angry at them because they're doing it out of love. Really, they want you to be a better person. So, but yes, I have two children technically. One biological and one not. Do you have any pets? I do. I have a Yorkie. His name is Titus. He is 11. So he's old, getting old. Um, but yeah. What is your favorite movie? I don't know. I am not a person that can watch movies more than once generally. I get bored with them. Unless it's Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings. So those would probably be my, I guess, my favorites because I can watch both of those collection of movies multiple times, and I have seen them multiple times. What is your favorite TV show? Um, any documentary and any true life, really. Not true life as in like reality TV, true life as in like true life crime, or yeah, any documentary. I'm a documentary sucker, especially if it's historical documentaries. Um, number eight, favorite music. I primarily only listen to country music or Christian music for the most part. Um, I'm not a fan of pop music nowadays. Um, I'll do like 90s and early 2000s, um, but I'm not a fan of today's pop music. Nine, favorite book? Um, I don't know. I don't get to read a ton. I don't read books more than once, generally. Um, I've read a couple books by Phil Robertson. Those were really good. Um, my daughter and I did read the whole entire Little House series this year. She loved them. But I don't know. I have a couple books on hold right now through the library. One on knitting, a couple on homesteading. What one word describes you? I have no idea. One word that describes me would probably be Shoot, I don't know. Um, nine times out of ten, I would say scatterbrained, but busy, maybe? I always feel like I'm busy and I don't have time to just sit. I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea what one it describes me. Eleven. Um, favorite snack? Chips and dip, hands down. I love me some chips and dip. I eat way too much when I get out. Um, and last question, who inspired you to make YouTube videos? Um, I don't remember. So this month is five years on YouTube for me. So a lot of the YouTubers that are out were not doing YouTube when I first started. Um, I don't remember who I watched because Flosstube was a thing before I started. Um, but I was just like, Sure, why not? Um, and the older I get, the more introverted I get. I am a large introvert, unless I know you really. 
I still don't, even if I know you, I'm still a homebody. I prefer to be home. I prefer to be in my, my zone, but I don't remember what I just figured why not. All right, so the next questions I got from Instagram when I was asking and from here, and I kind of just took those ones. Uh, number one, how did you meet your hubby? So hubby and I met in 2008. We actually worked at the same ambulance company and um, he went on and got his medic. And we actually um, started working on a truck for a while. So we were on an ALS truck, he was the medic, I was the EMT. Um, but yeah, that was in 2008, fast forward to 2020. So we've been together for almost 12 years. In January, January 15th will be 12 years we've been together. Our wedding is July 23rd though. What is your favorite restaurant in Michigan? I love me some Sagebrush Cantina. That would probably be my favorite restaurant. Um, it's a Mexican restaurant and mm, yum, 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 yum. Uh, how many stitches do you do on an average evening or how long do you stitch on an average evening? That depends. As you've been able to see on here, some days I just sleep. Uh, my stitching has been decreased due to this blanket that I'm working on and trying to get it done uh, because sometimes I'll put like a hundred stitches in and be like, all right, I got to focus on this blanket now. But I am a faster stitcher. Um, so like last night I did 155 on a full coverage and I only stitched for like an hour. So um, I would say average a night is about 200-ish, uh, give or take. And um, stitching depends. A lot of times I only get an hour to two hours um, during the weekday. Weekends, I tend to get a little bit more because in the morning I'll wake up with my daughter and before I start cleaning and stuff, she'll kind of just lay around like and watch uh, cartoons or whatever when she first gets up in our pajamas and I'll just sit behind her and stitch. What is your favorite piece you ever stitched? I did not bring them upstairs. One is too big. I'm gonna insert pictures, there's two. The first one is going to be my vows piece. Now these are the actual wedding vows my husband and I did for our wedding and I cross stitched them. Um, and the second one is going to be Twas the Night by Sue Hillis. Um, I think this turned out fantastic and I framed it in one of my grandpa's frames. Um, as you saw before, I'll um, insert some pictures, um, maybe at the end of the video, I'll put them at the end of kind of some of my cross stitch pieces for uh, Christmas that I've done so far. And you'll see grandpa's, it's sitting right next to the fireplace. Those are my two favorites so far. Um, if you could run your own business and stay home, what would you sell? I don't know, I would probably do project bags, but I feel there's so many people that do project bags, so I don't know if that would generate a lot of income. Um, I would love to be a stay-at-home mom. Hands down, I would walk tomorrow, even though I do like my job. Hands down, I would walk tomorrow if I could be a stay-at-home mom. Um, I've even talked about doing like the homesteader. I would love that. I would love that. Give me 30 acres in some woods on a small log home, mm, I'll move there tomorrow. That's just me. But it would probably be some sort of project bag, sewing, something that has to do with my crafty side. What is your most vivid or favorite childhood holiday memory? Um, so I have funny, a funny one that involves my brother. <laughs> Um, so my mom was, no, my dad was wrapping presents. My mom was folding laundry and my brother, who is the third in line, he's the, technically the middle child, uh, got a pair of his clean underwear wrapped for Christmas. And it was the first gift that he picked out 
and it was the funniest thing in the world because he was only like three and he was devastated because that's all he thought he got for Christmas but obviously that wasn't but um, but one of my favorite memories um, growing up as a kid, we would get McDonald's or something, which we didn't get fast food a lot as children. We, mom cooked at home and we ate at home every meal, kind of like we do in my house now. Um, but we would get McDonald's and we would go drive around Frankenmuth, which is a town just a little bit north of my parents. Well, it's, way, it's about 45 minutes north from me, but... We would drive around Frankenmuth and just look at Christmas lights and listen to Christmas music. And Frankenmuth was like the place to go because it has Bronner's, which is the world's largest Christmas store. And there's so many Christmas lights and it's so pretty. So that was that would probably be my most vivid childhood memory. Um, my daughter is actually spending the night at my parents tonight and that is their plan for my daughter and my niece. They're going to get them some McDonald's and go look at Christmas lights. So that is all the questions I have. If you want to do something like this again, just let me know. I, it's just my hubby and I home tonight. So I don't know what we're going to do. Um, I'm probably going to stitch and and or crochet and he's probably gonna game my husband likes gaming too so i'm gonna go just relax i hope you guys have a great night and i will see you tomorrow for our next day of flossmas bye